Hi, good morning. We're going to be working on a little midi doll hat. Now, this is the doll that I've got. She is an AliExpress midi, but they're still approximately the same proportions because I know I've got a genuine midi as well. And I know this hat fits both of them. And we're going to be making this really cute little pussy cat hat. Now, we were inspired because we had a trip out last week. Uh, my son was doing some supporting acting work in Leeds, so we got a chance to go around Leeds, which is somewhere I've not been for ooh, probably 30 years. Uh, and we found a gorgeous little cat cafe, so I couldn't resist. I had a certain somebody in my bag, holding her arms like that, bless her. And if you look, she was perfectly dressed because she had this really gorgeous little cat dress, which I'll show you in better detail in a moment. Uh, and that is from Bella's Doll Clothes. So I thought, well, okay, let's take her in. Got some funny looks, as you can imagine, trying to take some photos with the cats. I will put some pictures on at the end. Lovely place it was. It was really cosy, really, I don't know, everybody's really nice. It was just a lovely place to go. But we hadn't got a cat hat at that point. So I thought she needs a hat to complete her outfit. So this is what we ended up doing. So this is what you are going to be having a go at today. So it's a little bit of chat, but it's also a hat tutorial at the same time. It's quite easy to make. I believe a beginner could make it. You might need to take your time. Don't forget I am using UK terms though. That's the other thing because I know sometimes it can get a bit confusing. I know myself, I've got patterns and I've thought they've been in UK terms and they haven't. Um, and then it's only when I'm halfway through, I think, hmm, I don't think that's working. But we're going to have a go at this anyway. As I say, UK terms, four ply yarn, three millimeter crochet hook. And we'll show you some pictures of our little trip to see the cats as well at the end. So we're going to get on with the video now and I will see you in a moment. Here we are with our little hat then. And here's my little Midi Blythe. As I say, she's an AliExpress Midi Blythe. And she's in this gorgeous just look at this dress it is just so cute and i just had to show you we got i got the dresses from bella's doll clothes thank you so much cheryl they are beautiful and i've also got these two i've got one for blythe and i've got one for cindy so we need to do a decent photo shoot for that yet now this is the yarn i am using i know i've used the purple there uh but i'm using the blue now i thought it might show up a little bit better on the camera i'm hoping i've made the right decision there I'm actually going to be using a three millimeter crochet hook and I have a little stitch marker there. I have my needles to one side. I've got some scissors somewhere. There they are. There's my scissors, my book and paper on the other side. So we're going to get started and I'll sort of have a little chat about where we went as well. So we'll keep midi about there and we'll get on with this yarn. Now this is a 100% cotton yarn. It is a cotton called Peyton's. This one actually isn't a Peyton's, but they're like a mercerized cotton. So they're really nice cotton because they've got like a slight sort of, um, oh, I can't describe the word, sort of a coating. Does that make sense? Can you see how it sort of gives it a little shine? This yarn's a little bit softer than this one. So I'm also interested to see how it actually goes. So I have blue bits on my table. I've been trying to get rid of them. I need to get some glue remover. We're in the middle of cosplay armor making at the moment and I couldn't, I would be so embarrassed to show you the state of this room at the minute. There is stuff everywhere. I've just tried to make a little space here so I can get on with the hat. So I've been sort of covered in glow and paint and all sorts, helping my son do the armour for his. And yeah, we've got everybody's to sort out. And we've only got five days and we're still not made. But we will get there. We always do. It's always chaos that last week before a con because he actually competes. Him and my husband compete. So the costumes have to be like one, one well... I think it's about 80% handmade, as are like almost 100% handmade. Right, so I have my slip knot on here, and we're going to do our two chain, like I always do before I start, because it is an amigurumi style, even though we're going to be moving on to half trebles, but you can still work amigurumi with half trebles. So I have my two chain. Into my first chain, I'm going to do my six double crochets. We have one, two, can't hold it. What am I doing? Three, four, five, and six. Obviously, we need to increase quite away from there. So our next stage is we're going to be just doing two double crochets into each of those six to give us our twelve. So 
So that's two in our first one. Into our second one. Into number three. So two in each one, remember. Two in number four. Two in number five. And two in number six. So we now have 12. I'm just tightening up that middle bit there. So we have 12 stitches there. Obviously, again, we still need to increase by quite a bit. But we're going to move on to using half trebles now. Now, I'm not going to sort of stop start. There's not going to be a slip stitch, anything like that. We're just going to continue now with half trebles. But we do need to count here. I'm not popping my stitch marker in just yet, but it is important. I do count the 12 stitches. So I need two half trebles into each of those 12. So if we're not sure on the half treble, remember you wrap the yarn. You go into your stitch. You pull it through. You should have three on the hook there. A little bit of a twist to grab that yarn and pull it through all three. And that is our half treble. We're going to do another one in that same one, remember. So yarn round into the same one, pull it through, pull it all three. So that was number one. That was number one. So we've got 11 more to do like that. So this is number two. We need to concentrate a bit on this round. So that's two and two. In number three, we have two. In number four. In number five. And number six. Number seven. We're almost there. Number eight, we're over halfway anyway, aren't we? My yarn's wanting to split. There we go. That was number eight, wasn't it? All right, number nine. Number ten. Just got two more sets of two. Number 11, oh, don't know what that is, and number 12. So we now have 24 stitches, and that round was just two half trebles into each stitch. I'm going to bring my stitch marker in. I've got a little cute pussycat one today. Of course, I had to have a pussycat one, but quite a few cat ones. So I'm going to slide that in just where I finished my half trebles. So it's sort of in line with that stitch. We're now going to go around that is just, let me double check what I've written myself. We are increasing, we are. We're going to do two half trebles in the first one, one half treble in the second one. And you're going to do that 12 times. So it's a little combination. If it was in brackets, you would have uh, two half trebles in the first stitch, one half treble in the second stitch times 12. So we're going to get 36 stitches out of this. So I'm sort of going to count, even though the stitch marker's in there, I'm still going to sort of count because sometimes we do misalign it if we're not careful. So here we go. So two in our first one, one half treble in our second one. That's a set. Okay, we've got to do that 12 times. So two in our first one. Oh, look, my yarn has split now. Cotton's beautiful, but it does have a tendency to split. So that was one in that one. This is two in that one. So that's two. Two in one there. And one. So that is our second set. Third set coming up. So we have two in our first one. And one in our second one. That's set three finished. Set number four. A two. A one. Set number five, we have a two in the first one. We have a one in the second one. I'm just going to do a bit of that yarn. It's going to catch on the doll if I'm not careful. Do it over there. So this is number six. So we're going to go a two in the first one. A one in the second one. So that was number six. Number seven coming up. A two. And a one. Set number eight. A two. And then a one. Set 
set number nine. We have a two and a one. We are definitely nearly there now. Set ten. A one, two, and that one, and on a one. Number eleven. We have a two. We have a one. And our last set, we have a two. And we have a one and we'll look at that we're spot on back to our stitch marker so i could have actually trusted the stitch marker this time it's just i think it's really important that we get this first part of the hat a good fit um and the rest because they're just rounds you don't really need to concentrate that much you can use the stitch marker a little bit more now we are going to do a half treble round this time we've still not finished on the increase in but i'm still going to do a half treble round and I'm going to rely on that stitch marker, okay? So we're just going to do one half treble in every single stitch. Don't know whether you can hear that siren going past. We live on a main road and unfortunately it gets a little bit loud at times. The microphone's quite good at sort of cutting most sounds out. But uh, some obviously, they're, they're too loud to cut out. As I said, we had an exciting trip to Leeds. Um, as I said, my son was doing some supporting acting work there. And uh, so I got a chance. I took him. I drove there. And so while they were doing the filming, I disappeared off into Leeds. And it's been a long time since I've been in there. Um, but absolutely loved it. The first day, very disorientated because he's so big. Well, it is compared with where I live, put it that way. Um, so I wasn't happy with it and then I couldn't get something wrong with my phone and apparently I had to reset it or something so I was stressing about that so my first day was a bit stressy but my second day I was so so impressed with the place right I'm going to hit a bad point here look now you don't get knots that often in yarns but uh, we were once told my friend's got a, shop, a craft shop and one of the reps said that apparently they're allowed up to so many knots per ball without it being an error. Not happy with that, but that's how it is. So I've actually hit that. Thankfully, I'm not on an increase round or anything like that. But that there, and you see there to there, it's a little bit short, really. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches out because I'm going to need enough to sew this in. And I'm just going to cut it there and there, get rid of that knot. It's very annoying when that happens because obviously it slows your work and you have to have an extra end to sew in at the end, which we don't like ends to sew in, do we? So all I'm going to do is go into the next stitch, pull the new yarn through and do the stitch. Now we've got two ends here now. Now in a perfect world, we need to get these a little knot in them because I don't want them coming undone at any point. So I'm going to knot them now. I don't always when I'm working just for myself, I'll do it at the end. But I just wanted to point out that I do do it. So it means I've got those two ends now to sew in extra. Could have done without that, but there you go. So we're going to carry on now. I did a double crochet into... Ah, that's a pain. I hope I can pull it out. Ah, there's supposed to be half trebles. What have I done? Made a mess now, haven't I? All right. Ignore the knot that's there. I can get round it. <laughs> so that was the half treble. These were just one half treble. I've made it very difficult. I haven't had to do one half treble in each stitch now. Right, so that's my new bit of yarn. My next stitch is a half treble. Yarn round. There we go. I'm back to normal now. So, as I was saying, we had this great trip into Leeds. Um, I had a fabulous dinner. I went to a Lebanese uh, restaurant, which I've never had. I mean, I know I do like some food from that sort of area, but I've never actually been in a restaurant. And oh, it was amazing. I had a great vegetarian burger there. I know that sounds a bit weird, you go somewhere like that and you have a burger, but believe me or me, it was totally sort of their taste and everything, it was gorgeous. And then we found the cat cafe, and as it turned out, I happened to have taken the doll in my bag, everybody knows there's usually a doll somewhere, and I'd actually put her in a cat dress, so that's perfect. And as I said, with the cat dress, um, it's one I got from Bella's Doll Clothes, well, I've got the three, one for Midia and one for Cindy as well, and I just thought, I thought this fabric, I mean, just look how cute is that fabric. I know I had somebody on Facebook say that they would have had it in for themselves. I must admit, it is rather cute, isn't it? But I don't think she does adult sizes. I think she only does doll sizes. Right, so we're just pottering around here with just one half treble into each half into each half treble until we actually get to our stitch marker. It's 
So hopefully I've not lost you with all that performance with the knot. That was a bit annoying. I'm hoping there's not going to be another one. They don't usually get the knots in the cotton. They're usually quite good. Right, so we're round with our half treble round. So I'm going to move my stitch marker up now because I do want to do an increase round. So I'm going to pop that in there. And we're going to be doing two half trebles in the first one. Yeah, so two in this first one and then a one and a one. Yeah, so it's a two a one and a one and that is your combination of increases and again you're going to do that 12 times and it will give us 42 stitches okay so off we go so two in our first one and one in our second one two in our first one i'm just going to trust the stitch marker this time but you need to do 12 sets oh i did a one naughty me take it back start again that's because that's what I did on the last round and I'm too busy talking, aren't I? Right, so two. One. One. That is our combination. Yep. So we have a two. A one. And a one. Around her ankle now. What am I doing? Perhaps if I pop it to the other side, it'd be easier. Over there, away from the wall. Right, back to our work. Let's concentrate a bit more. What am I like? We're going to have a two, a one, and a one. We have a two, we have a one. And a one. Okay, we're expanding nicely here now. So we have a two, a one, and a one. Careful going on when I, because I've got to go over this knot now, so that's going to be a bit of a pain. We have a two, a one, and a one. But hopefully you haven't got a knot, so it shouldn't be a problem. We just carry on round. So we can have a two. Actually, it wasn't that bad to go over. We have a one and a one. We have a two, We're almost round. We're over halfway anyway. We have a one. Oh, my wall nearly went in strong wrong stitch then. And a one. We have a two. Still all half trebles. We need a one and a one. We have a two. So your twos are always your increases. That's where you're increasing. We have a one and a one. I know most of you know that, but obviously if we have some sort of beginners here, I do have to throw the odd bit in there, hopefully to help. Two and a two. And we've got one more in there, one more set. We have a two. And we have a single one. I shouldn't say single because that's a different stitch in America. And another okay so we are round as it turned out i did get to my stitch marker nicely now for what we're going to do now is we have the increases there is no more increasing here but we're going to do six rounds of just that half treble so if you want to skip ahead or pause or whatever you're wanting to do i'm going to readjust my stitch marker and i will i could do with adjusting it every maybe what three to four rounds uh, to make sure we're in the right position there. So we're going to carry on in a spiral method of just one half treble in each stitch and we're going to do that for six rounds. That is why I've got my pen and paper here ready. So I'm just going to move my glasses up my face because they keep sliding down as always. And off we go. As I say, some of you will leave me now and because uh, you might be faster or you might be slower depending on how you want to work. So you might rather pause it. And I will see you at the other end because there is a little bit of shaping here. So you will need to sort of come back to me at that point and obviously for the ears. So otherwise we can just carry on with our six rounds of one half treble in each half treble. So as I was saying, we found the Cat Cafe and I just couldn't resist. It is a charity one. It's marvellous. It's obviously they you sort of pay an entrance fee and then... Um, you buy something to eat or drink if that's what you want. I'll pop a picture on at the end because I was really naughty. I had a cappuccino and I had a strawberry cheesecake with cream, of course. Um, it was absolutely delicious. So, yeah, I did that. And it was great. They sit you down and there's all these comfy chairs and the cats sort of potter around you. And, yeah, it was really nice. As long as you don't pick the cats up, 
you are allowed to pot around and sort of take photos or stroke them and things like that or if they come up to you and want to sort of sit next to you if you're happy with that that's okay too um but obviously i had to try and get some pictures with the doll yeah i know and you can imagine what people's faces were like <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny actually it doesn't really bother me i know some people are a little bit nervous about it because people are judgmental they look at you like you're absolutely mad or you'll get the opposite end of the spectrum and people are really excited about it and they want to know what you're doing and oh isn't that cute and things like that so on average there's times i don't there are places i wouldn't get the doll out to photograph uh oh have i knocked you dizzy there is that okay let's stabilize the camera there a second um but on average most people they might think you're a bit nutty but you know they're not bothered and they find it entertaining if i've made somebody smile i'm quite happy about that um so i did take the doll around and there is a couple of photos of the cats having a sniff at her i just put them near the cats i didn't sort of sort of you know get there too much in their face i just sat it near them and if they wanted to come up to her then i took the photograph that's all i did with that um, but yeah, I had a great time in there. It was really, really nice. But she didn't have her hat at that point. So I thought, oh, what a shame. I should have thought about making it before. Um, so I decided to make a cat hat. So that is where this one has come from. So let me just mark that one down. Remember, we have six rounds. That was round one of six. You may need to try it on the doll after maybe say four rounds. Because if your tension's a bit looser or something like that, you do need to check it out. So I'm on round two now of just one half treble into every single stitch. Midi's with me because I've been making hats for Ready for Dollycon and I decided to make a midi collection. So I've been making a few different hats. So this was just one of about five different designs. I've got three done, but I've got a couple more designs to do yet. It's because uh, for Dollycon I have a stall there and there's quite a few dolls that I have sort of for the stall there's my blythe my midi blythe there's my smart doll there's my cindy's of course i have some pepper things i have some little outfits for tiny weeny ari dolls so there's quite a lot i have to do so i sort of say just a few couple of each design that i'll put on the table because otherwise it becomes chaos because i don't just do the hats for some of those as well there's like little doll cardigans or dresses accessories things like that so there's quite a lot on the table and i haven't got long to go it's july for dolly Khan, so i need to get get some work done but this week is just full of cosplay because as i mentioned my son and husband are competing in a competition on saturday and then we've also got a cosplay uh, event on the sunday and at the moment for my son we only have half a costume because it's all armour so uh, we've got a lot of work to make because it is all made from EVA foam but it's the painting and things like that that it takes forever so I've been helping him out a bit with the painting so we can speed things up hence why I've got little bits of blue on my table and I'm surprised I've not got any on my hands that I've not noticed so I know yesterday my grandson saw me so what's that on your hands and on? it was silver paint you know like you do Right, we're almost round for round two. We will get it done. But I have got to uh, get one finished for my granddaughter, for sun the Sunday one. And I've got to help my daughter with one of her projects for hers for the Sunday as well. Because most of the family do do it. The littlest is alright because he just wants to go as Batman so that was easy. We just buy a Batman costume. And we are round, round two. So we have four more rounds to go. Shall we have a little look at what it looks like on her head? I absolutely love her hair. I've, I know I mentioned before when I got to my Shadow High dolls, I love dolls with long hair, but I also love them with short hair because it's so much easier to deal with. So let's have a little check. Yep, that looks okay. Just sort of needs to sit comfortably on the head. So we've got a little bit of movement there, but that's good. So off we go with our next round. Or not. 
I've got to slow down a bit because not so much with the crochet but I've got to slow down with everything I've got so much going through my head I'm sort of like twitching a little bit at the moment so I've got to try and relax with my crochet so I don't get to crochet till night at the moment I'm trying to work on some bunting um, for Jubilee which I'm quite pleased with it. it's a little little triangle with a little rose in the middle so it's quite cute so I might get that one done I need to get that one done this week because uh, people are preparing aren't they for the uh, something I was going to say silver Jubilee that was when I was a child uh, our platinum Jubilee for our, our queen coming up so I know people are doing parties and events and things like that so if they're wanting to make something I need to sort of get on that one so i think that's probably going to be my next one this week and i've also made a jubilee crown for our cindy you know like the chocolate orange one i made well i've made a smaller one for cindy or similar sort of size dolls i know cindy's head's a little bit bigger than barbie but you could probably get away with it with barbie or monster highs um any doll sort of approximately those proportions Right, we're almost round on round three, which means we will be halfway. And then my stitch marker keeps hitting the table, which is very annoying. Because it's clattering, isn't it? Oh, it's nearly caught. There we go. Make sure it stays flat when it splits like that. Sometimes I'll take it out completely, you know, well, a couple of stitches out to make sure the yarn sits flat and then uh, carry on. Because sometimes when it splits, it's sort of, I don't know, like one bit comes out longer than the rest and then it can uh, make a bit of a messy work. So you do need to make sure that the yarn's nice and flat before you continue. Right, I'm going to move my stitch marker up because I said I would, didn't I, when I got to heart, well, I got to about three or four, well, we're on three, so I'm going to move it up now. So we're halfway on that. To be honest, after you've got past these six, there's not a huge amount to it, it's just these little ear flaps really that are on it that we have to add and then obviously we need to do some ears, but... Apart from that, it's not uh, not that much to do now. So we're on round four. Oh, there we go, clatter, clatter. No, oh, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Bear with me a second. I didn't really need to cough. And I'm back. <laughs> oh, I got a real tickle in my throat then. Um, so I just paused it just for a second while I, I had a little cough. Yeah, as I said, we know we're at halfway mark because the uh, stitch mark is clattering. Because it's hitting the table, so we're almost halfway. Well, we are halfway now. Try and lift it up, but the thing is, if I lift it too much towards the camera, it will blur. I know you know what you're doing at this point, but it's still not nice to sort of watch a blur, is it? I do try and avoid it. It does sometimes happen, whether we like it or not. I need to actually take some pictures of Midi in her hat, um, because as I say I've taken some cat sort of cafe photos of her but I'd not made the hat at that point so I'm going to go and take some pictures of the hat that's if it stops raining it's very sort of dull and rainy and miserable at the moment here but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get out and take some pictures because I want to get the video up I will pop this pattern on the website as well so I will put a link for that I think it's the first, is it the first midi pattern I think I've got up on there actually. In fact, thinking about it, I don't even know whether I've made a category. I might just pop it under Blythe 
because I know I've only got it's one blithe pattern up at the moment so I might just put them together blithe and midi blithe that might be easier because every time I go back on the website to do more because I'm not really com that computer savvy I'm okay but I'm not brilliant um I end up forgetting where I'm supposed to set things up every time right we're round that is round four two to go so should we have a look let's see how we're fitting on here yep that's fitting nice i mean you could make it just leave it at that we've got a nice little sort of beanie perhaps there's loads of different things you can do from this base pattern so it's sort of it's a nice sort of handy one to have to do a bit of everything so off we go round five but as you could see when I just popped it on her there, it's about the right length. I like the hats on the blides and the middies to come a little bit lower on the heads. I think they look quite cute like that. And I think this is what this one does. Oh, have her eyes gone funny? Oh, they have. Right, I don't know if, if you've not got one of these, you might think that's weird, but you can move their eyes side to side there. But it was weird because I thought one eye had gone more sideways than the other one i don't know what that was about i think perhaps when i just popped her down then i must have knocked the thing at the back i actually think i prefer the midi i mean i love the blides i mean i've only got aliexpress blides um i keep saying i'm going to save up for a genuine one um but i think the midis are just just so cute they've just got such the cutest little faces and they're quite a nice size to sort of if you want to carry the doll around or they're a nice size to make bits and bobs for like this here we go <laughs> nearly at that halfway because we're clatter 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 oh very annoying stitch marker you are so it speeds me up around that halfway point because i want to get past where it's clattering I think we're nearly there. Hey, we've got past the halfway mark. We're not clattering now. Or maybe we are. <laughs> no, we're not now. Oh, this is round five, nearly finished. There's only one more to go. And then the final round with the with the actual ear flaps, as in the ones that go her, over her ears, if I could speak, uh, not the ones that are the cat ears. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. In we go. Nearly lost that stitch. Right, so that is, I would say, round five. Maybe one more stitch. Yep, above the stitch marker. That's what we want. So that is round five. Again, if your tension's a little bit loose, you may have wanted to sort of look at adjusting at some point or maybe doing two stitches together somewhere. If you're ever going to do that, try and do it equally. So if you decide it's a little bit big, sort of maybe around here, do two together, sort of like in the four points, and then uh, sort of build it up from there. Usually, if your tension's a bit loose, that's all you need, or perhaps you need to drop down a hook size, or keep an eye on the yarn, because I know yarns are different in different places. So here we go, our final round. That's why when I make a pattern, I, for example, I will put on that this is Peyton's 100% cotton yarn uh, on the pattern. And yeah, you do need to be aware. Most four plies should be fine, but sometimes there can just be that slight difference, which can make something a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. There we are, back almost halfway again, because we've got the clatter. The next two rounds, should I call it, are easy enough to do, um, but there's going to be a double crochet round and then the ear flap round. 
the double crochet round I'm doing because it just sort of pulls it together a little bit at the end because the half doubles are a looser stitch and you don't really want that looseness on the edge of something I mean obviously it depends what you're making sometimes that is needed uh, but in this particular situation I decided I wanted it to be a double crochet round just to sort of pull it together a little bit it sort of neatens that edge and it just sort of tightens it up as well almost round Checking them on the camera there. I do know I have a tendency to bring the work towards me. I try desperately to keep it in the middle, but every now and again, especially when I'm doing a lot of something, I sort of start concentrating on it and it's like, woo, like that. And that's not good. It needs to stay there. So apologies if I've ever done that, because I know I definitely did it in the earlier videos. I'm a lot better now than I was. But every now and again, it does happen. We are round. So as I just mentioned, I want a double crochet round now. So let's have another little try. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we're going to have a double crochet round. So just one double crochet into each of those half trebles. So that's a nice simple round. So off we go again. Just round to our stitch marker. Remember, no wrapping now. It's just straight in and pull through. Straight in, pull through, pull through two. Thing is when you've been doing half trebles or trebles you will have a tendency to try wrapping um because it's just become a habit if you've been doing like a lot of granny squares for example uh, oh that's a nightmare you get used to doing it and you want to wrap your yarn all the time but you will get out of it it's only one round we're doing anyway can you see it just sort of neatens that edge i mean this is quite neat but i think it just makes it a little bit neater there There we are, so we're coming up to halfway again. I said we weren't going to have to listen to that again. I forgot about this round. Come on, let's get past that centre point. Let's lift that stitch marker off the tail. There we go, we're off, nearly. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because every time I say it, I'm wrong. Now it's not touching the table. No, it is touching the table. I think it's because I'm all my hands up and down as well. Now, the actual ear flaps, the ear flaps that go over her, her ears, are really, really simple. So you, there's not a lot there's not really any shaping in it at all but we will be using some trebles as well which we haven't used up to now there's that stitch marker we're almost there i mean you can usually feel anyway when you've got round so you don't need to worry too much about the stitch marker because you can actually see it even though you see other stitch markers over there but we are actually done so the next set we're going to do we're going to have a little look. This is what we're going to make. Can you see how oh, that's all it is? It's just like a little little dip there. And it's so, so easy to do. So I don't know why I've put that in there. I need to get into the stitch. We are actually going to do three trebles in the next stitch. So yarn round. And we're going to have one. Two. And three. And then we're going to have three trebles in the next one as well. One, two, and three. And then I'm going to have a quick look at what I did on here because I've written down double crochets, but I'm not so sure I didn't do a slip stitch. I think they were. Right, now what we need, we need equal positionings. So approximately, don't over worry about counting. I will put the count on the actual pattern but we're not going to over we just sort of think about halfway that's what you need so in this next stitch i'm going to do a slip stitch yeah so in pull it through pull it through again in pull it through pull it through it's a love or hate situation with slip stitches if you don't want to do a slip stitch you can do a double crochet it will just sort of lengthen it very fractionally 
but uh, I think again like we we're talking about neatening I think that sort of looks a lot neater just to finish the edge off I know I do it on my sun hats and things like that because I just think it gives a nice neat edge but I know there's quite a love-hate relationship with slip stitch. You can see I have this sort of weird, you see how I twist it? So I go in, pull it through, I twist it. Um, however you do yours, obviously. Um, but if you really do detest them enough, just do this as a double crochet round. The only thing is, it doesn't show as much definition. You know where you drop from the treble down? If you do a double crochet it doesn't show quite as much, that's all. But we're talking millimetres, it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay, it's off again. So I know I'm nearly halfway. <laughs> so I can have a little look. So I'm just going to keep going, keep going. Then I'm going to stop and have a look. Do I look about halfway? Not quite, maybe two more stitches or one more stitch even. Have another look. Yeah, I'm happy with that because it's got to be equal, hasn't it? So we're going to do three trebles in the next one and three trebles in the one after that. And be really annoyed with the stitch marker, which I could actually take out now. There's no point it being there, is there? There we go. Stitch marker out so it's quiet. So that's one treble. Two treble. Three treble. Three treble in the next one. One. Two. And three. So now we're going to carry on back to the beginning with just one slip stitch in each one. So drop it down and slip stitch. And we'll carry on with those slip stitches until we get back to the beginning. Again, you'd know when you got back to the people well, pump out, you'll know because we get to the ear flap. But where slip stitches are concerned, what's that little little bit of fluff there? Um, you will always know because you're not going to get into the stitch if it's a slip stitch when you get round. I actually quite like this blue. I mean, I did the purple because obviously she's got purples and pinks and things like that. Although she has got a little bit of blue in her dress. And it would actually work for that as well. Um, so that is why I'd pick the purple. But I do quite like this. It's like a denim blue, isn't it? Two more stitches. Last stitch. And I'm going to leave it out there. So... Put off my yarn, fasten off by pulling through, and let's have a little look at the fit here. Ta-da! Isn't that just the cutest? Now the thing is, that just makes a cute hat on its own. It doesn't have to become the pussycat hat that I'm going to turn it into. Now I'm only going to make one pussycat, if I can speak, one pussycat ear. Um, I know I put on my Facebook, I wasn't sure whether the ears were too long or too short. So I've actually taken a round out since I did this. But someone commented it could be wider at the bottom. But I think that comes down to how you sew it on. You can actually make it wider when... My own camera there. When I actually stitch it on. You see, I did it again and I'm, I'm talking and it's over here and you can't even see. Um, yeah, so I, ha I have shortened it slightly from this one. So if you want to lengthen it and add an extra round in. By all means, it just comes down to your tension again, perhaps. So, we're going to start, yes, you guessed it, with our slip stitch. And it is an amigurumi ear. So, it's not one-sided. It is like, if you can sort of see, it would make a little little, little tube sort of thing. Um, I think that's neat. So, you could do a one-sided triangle for it, but I just don't think they look as neat when you do that. So, slip stitch onto the hook. First bit's a little bit fiddly. So, we go one, two. That's easy. We're going to do just three double crochets into that first stitch. One. Two. And three. As I said, this is where it gets a little bit fiddly because this is quite hard to get across here. Because we're going to do two in the first one and then a one and a one. Because there's only three stitches there, remember. Now the stitch is right over here. It feels like it's a long gap, but make sure you do get it right. Because otherwise you get a funny shape here. So we get one, two in that first stitch. And then a one. You see, it's really annoying you know, it sort of twizzles around your fingers, but as soon as you get past that, it's worth it. And a one. So that was two stitches in the first one and a one in each of the following two. So we now have four. 
so there's four stitches there we're going to increase again we're going to do two in the first one and then one in the next one this time times two this will give us six stitches but finding it can you see it's all curled over and you're like i can't find it so try and push it out it's not so easy at this point if you've got something like i mean be careful if you're using scissors but for example i'll just sort of try and push it over the end of my scissors a little bit there we go just straighten your stitches out so we'll, you have to, might have to persevere with this little bit and have a go with it so we're going to go to if i can get in we know whether we're there aren't we so two in this one one in the next one it doesn't look anything like an ear i know at this point but two in the next one and one in the next one so that has given us another two increase so we now have six when you see it's flattened out again so just push it down push it over something or Make sure it's not sharp that it will cut anything though. We're going to have another increase. We're going to do two in one and one in one. So it's the same, but we're going to do it three times this time because we have more stitches to start with. So we have a two and we have a one. We do it again. We have a two. We have a one. One more time. We have a two. It's easier to hold now. Oh, we will have a two if I get in there. There we go, a two and a one it's getting way easy to hold now it's just those first couple of stitches which were a pain so we have yet one more increase and it's going to take us up to 12 stitches so we're going to do two in our first one and then one in each of the next two times three okay so we do a two we do a one and we do a one and that is set number one set number two here we go so we have a two we have a one and we have a one one more set to go we have a two we have a one and we have a one so as you can see we get sort of like a little pointy triangle shape that's why it was important i know it's not easy to do that first bit I even get annoyed with it until I get past a certain point but we need it to get a really nice point because obviously a cat's ear is a little bit sharper than say a teddy bear's ear or something like that now this is where you can decide what you want to do I'm going to be doing some double crochet rounds so just one double crochet into each of those 12 so we'll do that and we'll look at it on the hat and we'll decide from there we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so let's have a look how that sits on on the hat that's not quite a neat small little ear I'm going to leave mine at that because I know I did adjust my others to that. But if you do want to lengthen the ear a little bit, just do another round. Okay, you could just do another round and you've got a longer ear. You could do some really long ears and you could actually turn them into rabbit ears as well. But for now, I'm just going to go there. So we need to just finish off. Make sure we leave enough yarn here to sew it onto the hat. We don't really need that much, but it's always best to have more than less. And I'm just going to sew the one ear on with you. So we're going to get rid of, make sure that is really pulled tight. Cotton does have a tendency to come undone. So you do have to be really sort of strong with it. Or if you're worried about it, sew it in on the inside. So I'm just going to crop that off because I know it should stay there. It will stay there. I hope it'll stay there. Oh, throwing my, scissors, my needles about. Now, I mentioned this on a previous one when I sewed something on. Basically, I flatten it off and I make sure my yarn is here at the end where it's folded. Again, positioning's up to you. Different cats have different positions for their ears. So, oh, you may have a pussycat that you want to do it the same as. This cotton does not want to go through this needle. I can't actually find some of my other needles. I've got a horrible thought that someone's going to sit, because I was crocheting downstairs, I've got a horrible thought someone's going to sit on the sofa and they're going to know about it. They're going to find them for me, because I think it's slipped down the side. It's like oh, it's on a like a little magnetic one. 
it's my pussycat one um but it's not up here and it should be and i didn't notice it downstairs either so i've got a feeling that somebody's going to sit on it so we need to decide ish i usually keep it on the doll when i'm deciding i think i like about there and i also usually find it usually sits slightly forward not central slightly forward it depends on the doll some of these dolls that have got larger heads i do find it sort of sits forward something like a barbie i find it sits pretty sort of evenly but you can decide so i'm going to go for there i think that's about right so what i've done is i've held the position and i've just flattened it now i'm going to pick up a bit of yarn from the actual hat then i'm going to pick up the yarn from both sides picked up through both sides of the little ear I'll hold it in place again i'm going to pick up both sides so we look at like little four can you see it's actually one two three four sort of pieces and pull it tight pick it up push it through both sides and again and then the right bit you don't want to get it too far out of line I'm squeezing her head, bless her, yeah. You could actually, at that point, we get to that point, we know where it's going. You can actually sort of hold it like this. But it just positions nicer if you can do it on the doll. It's like when I do the chocolate orange covers, I like to do it on the orange. Right, let's see, make sure I'm happy. Now, can you see there's a little bit at the end stood up there? I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go one more stitch in. And I'm going to push it all the way through the hat onto the inner side. And I'm going to tie my little knot to fasten it off. Then I'm going to push it back through. Check I don't need it for anything else. Make sure I'm happy with how I've stitched it on, which I am. And what I'm actually going to do is thread it through the ear. You know, like when we do an amigurumi animal or something, we thread it through. And that's what I'm going to do. Just make sure a couple of times it's not going anywhere so we're going to fasten that one off try not to lose that needle because it's the only one i've got that size now like until like somebody sits on the others so let's have a look yeah i'm happy with that so obviously i do need to make the other ear for her but i do think that's come out quite cute and i think the blue actually sort of does go with the dress it just picks out some of these tiny tiny bits of blue detail down there now for mine just to finish it off i just added a button that's because i've got my octopudding buttons now i do need to order some more of these because i've got nowhere near enough for some of my dolly con things but they only fit sort of for like the larger dolls smart dolls blades etc so and i just stitched on a little button you could stitch on a flower button you don't have to stitch on anything um but yeah you could add detail as you require from there so i hope you enjoyed doing that as i say i'll pop some little pictures on at the end because i was really pleased how everything came out and i had such a lovely day i've just got to put some pictures on and we need to go and get some pictures in fact i've got to finish this because i need to go and take some photos of her don't i in them and i will see you very very soon with hopefully some jubilee bunting that's the theory but we've also got in fact let me grab that oh there she is because i made my chocolate orange crown covered in ta well Cindy had to have one. And again, she's in one of the gorgeous dresses from uh, Cheryl at Bella's Doll Clothes. But you'll see them better when I actually do the little tutorial for our hat there. And also, you will find, I will go again, go into detail, the chocolate orange one actually fits our midi, which I didn't know. But I will show you that again when I do that video. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share, etc, etc. Hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you all very soon with my next video. Bye-bye for now.